Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about TTRPGs. Hmm. First up for TTRPG, we've got the uh, witchy, cottage quarry, Halloween y kind of mug. Um, and inside of it, we have the Palace Elixir from DT. Uh, again, check them out. They're great. Uh, they make high quality stuff, and I don't think they're associated with wizards, uh, which is the, kind of the point of this whole season. Um, so. Let's go ahead and let's dive straight back into Wander Home. Uh, no time to beat around the bush here, uh, which is kind of ironic because the game is about taking time and, you know, letting things happen. <laughs> but let's go ahead and let's dive back in talking about character creation today, which I know is always the big thing on people's minds, the big question marks uh, that they might have. So let's go ahead and let's crack this bad boy open and, you know, figure out what it is, how we do this. Um, so... The way that Wander Home is set up is uh, through uh, four characters is through a series of playbooks. If you are familiar with a lot of other games that are not D&D, Pathfinder, um, etc., you are probably very familiar with the term playbooks. Uh, it's used in a lot of the Powered by the Apocalypse games. Um, it, it, it basically is your character type. Um, it, it is the, the thing that you have to basically crack open and determine how your character actually operates. Um, I gotta show you this as well. Uh, this here is an actual page from the book. It is it is how uh, they actually like lay out some of the stuff. They have little introductory paragraphs that take up a quarter of the page um, before skipping to the next one. It is the book as a whole is set up just to be inviting and easy, <laughs> uh, which is so on theme with the game that I have to just give it a shout out basically every time I look at it. Um, so uh, there are. Uh, in this game, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 different playbooks um, that you can choose from. Uh, these playbooks, as everything else in this book, do not have a whole lot of hard mechanical information, but they do have a couple of things. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about uh, them just in general. Uh, it's important to note that none of these playbooks are combat-focused classes. Like, they're, they're not, that's not the point of this game, once again. Um, these are all basically just like people that you would, could see yourself seeing wandering down the road. Um, it, the name is very apt for this game. Um, the playbooks in the order presented, which I believe is alphabetical order, are Caretaker, Dancer, Exile, Firelight, Fool, Guardian, Moth Tender, Peddler, Pilgrim, Poet, Ragamuffin, Shepherd, Teacher, Vagabond, and Veteran. Um, you might be saying, well, there are a couple in there that sound like that, like Guardian and Veteran. Um, all kind of sound like those two sound like they might be fighty, right? And kind of the idea is that you have moved past um, the it, well, with the veteran, you've moved past the point of uh, actual conflict and you just want to have a calm, quiet life. Uh, it, actually, they each have flavor text associated with them. Uh, the veteran was once a great hero who held the entire world on the tip of their blade, no longer. Uh, and then the guardian is actually more specific. Uh, or more specifically like some kind of a parent or older sibling or something like that because uh, the guardian takes care of a ward, a young child with a difficult past in desperate need of care. There is somebody who is there caring for someone along the road. That That is, that is the idea. Uh, <laughs> but past that, you might notice that all of these kind of sound like uh, the traveling types. And that is the idea here. Uh, we're going to look at the caretaker specifically, but all of these have a similar sort of build. Uh, their features obviously a little bit different, but this is this is what you get when you crack open the book and you look at and try to go ahead and build off of one of these uh, playbooks. First off, each of them gets a really nice little piece of art. I love uh, the art aesthetic in this. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the, they're all that general vibe of like, hand drawn obviously uh but they're they're not like hyper detailed they're not hyper realistic it's it's just kind of like this casual drawing that you might see as you or that you might do as you like roll down the road or something like that it, so much intention so much intention went into this book uh so the caretaker uh flavor text first obviously someone must pay attention to all the small and forgotten things in the world someone li must listen to the voiceless you are alive your care is tender supportive and silent choose a name and some pronouns that's basically how each of them begins with a little bit of flavor text followed by choose a name and some pronouns um, it, because you need those to be a character right you need an identity of some sort um, followed 
following from that, you choose an animal that you're going to be. Uh, they give some specific examples and then a couple of generalized categories that you could fall into. Uh, so for caretaker, the options are uh, stoat, salamander, lemur, crow, a reflective animal, or a quiet animal. Um, so you can pick any of those things to be. Um, again, you're not going to be a bug of any sort. Those are like farmed in this world. They're or cultivated, I guess, more than farmed. Um, but they're they're not necessarily the sentient, quote unquote, species of the world here. Uh, they're not the dominant sentient species of the world. They are uh, they're in support of the species of the world. Um, and you choose two uh, choose two you value being and two you feel are exhausting to be. Um, alert, reflective, patient, friendly, expressive, organized, gentle, masculine, feminine uh, are the options here for caretaker. Uh, they change a little bit, I believe, from, uh, yeah, they change from one to the next, uh, but they are all just general personality traits, uh, general individual traits. Uh, you pick two that you are and two that you think would be exhausting to have to be. Um, then you choose three to four uh, uh, from a list to describe your look. This list is uh, 12 long. Uh, here we have wooden sandals, huge glasses, scratchy cloak, wheelchair, loose papers covered in sketches and notes, ceremonial robes, paint stained pants, sea blue, sea blue clay canteen, flowing dress, faded shawl, plain ceramic mask, and a constant rhythmic tapping. So we're not even talking about strictly aesthetic things. It could be like little fidgets that you might have, little things you might be doing. Uh, again, you can go outside of this list. These are options for you, and they sort of run a full spectrum for you to actually get to pick from, which I think is really nice. Uh, and then choose up to five friends that hide in the many shrines you carry with you. So the idea is that you are the one cultivating and trying to place all of the small and forgotten gods of the world. Uh, you have all these little, like, spiritual things that kind of flit around you. Uh, and you are trying to bring them to the places that they eventually want to be. That is the idea behind uh, your character here. Uh, and so then there are there is a long list here, probably 15 to 20 long uh, options for different small and forgotten gods that you could have with you. I keep calling them small and forgotten gods because that is how they are referred to in the book. Um, that uh, have associated traits. We talked about traits. Uh, like Dulcet, the tiny go or the god of tiny melodies, they are dramatic and or glamorous. Uh, those are both uh, dramatic and glamorous are both traits that are listed later in the book that give you some sort of idea of how they would interact with the world uh, around them. Uh, flipping the page because each one of the playbooks is four pages long. Uh, you choose one ceremony object that you still honor and that one that you cannot treasure any longer and then tell it tell the table about them you're supposed to create these characters with everybody so session zero you sit down you like go around you talk about the characters you are creating um, and there are uh, seven different options here uh, again with some having associated traits with individuals from that items past some not so much um, and so we've got uh, you know, a wide ceramic dish, always filled with the golden light bestowed upon you by the many small and forgotten gods who witnessed you as you faced certain death. Not having an associated trait with a past person. Or a box of beeswax candles, handmade by your learned mentor as part of their final lesson. Learned, learned mentor. Um, so that, learned, is a trait. Um, but you pick one that you honor and one that you can't honor anymore um, from this list of seven here. Uh, and then this is sort of the big part of creating the character. Uh, you ask one to the left and one to the right of the list of four questions uh, for, for your playbook. So for this one in particular, uh, it is, which of my small and forgotten gods did you rescue and give to me? What do you know something about the world that I do, or what, yeah, what do you know about the world that I don't? Uh, what is something you, I knew about you I had no right to know? And do I listen to you when you feel small and forgotten? You pick one of those questions and you ask the person to your left and you pick one of the questions you ask the person to your right and they help you sort of like flesh out the character because the character creation process in this is collaborative because there is no like set facilitator for the game no set guide for the game you at the table are the people who are trying to push the story forward we'll talk about how that all works tomorrow um, but it the point is everybody is creating the characters together here uh, some things you can always do <laughs> uh, again these are a little odd sometimes, but they're all sort of aesthetic kind of role play kind of things. Uh, pause, tilt your head to the side and keep going. 
Uh, play with one of your gods. Say something in silence better than words can. Notice a little friend everyone else has overlooked. Say, hold this. Ask, hush, can you hear that? They get a token if they try their best to hear what you do. So, there is a mechanical thing in here that is something you could do, but the rest of them are all sort of role play -y type of deals. And th those other five of them are just little, like, things that you can throw in at random times. Um, and then during each seasonal holiday, choose one that you haven't before. There is then a list of nine things here that you can pick from to go ahead and advance your character a little bit. Uh, each of these is different per playbook, uh, but some of the caretakers are choose something a playbook can do. One of your god learns how to do it. Uh, that is any playbook in the game. You, In the some things you can always do category, you can flip through and look to other ones, and one of your small gods uh, can learn how to do that. Uh, let go of something that only served to exhaust you. Again, this game is so heavily rooted in the roleplay and, like, build of it that you just have um, uh, things that you can let go of as a mechanical advancement to your character. Uh, spend a token to transform into an empty or abandoned... In, to transform an empty or abandoned place into a shrine. This place becomes a hallow in addition to whatever else it is. A hallow is one of the natures that we had talked about. Um... So they gain those traits as well as whatever it originally was. Uh, so these are these are just like random little things that you can do uh, to add on to your character. There's no major mechanical changes that will be made through being able to uh, advance your character. But that's kind of the point. The point is that you are who you are already. And you are uh, maybe trying to learn about yourself, maybe trying to develop some more. But you are not going to suddenly be able to like hurl boulders across ravines or something like that you gain little little advancements as you go through your journey and that's really really cool and really really dynamic in a game uh when the entire sphere around it is focused so heavily on like major character advancements it's a really interesting like step back from uh sort of the meta if you will of the game i put meta in quotes for those of you listening because it, i don't want to talk about facebook i want to talk about like the the meta strategy of games here um so it's really, really interesting uh, way to approach it in my mind. Uh, the other thing that you do in creating a character, that that's the end of your playbook. That's the end of how you create your character. You just kind of write these things down so that you have them in front of you. Uh, the other thing that you do when you're creating a character is you create some kith. Um, if you don't know what kith are, uh, kith are basically relations that you might have. They are, they are friends. They could be family. A lot of times uh, kith and kin go together. Uh, if you follow Critical Role, you know that one of their, uh, or their first novel was called Kith and Kin. Um, Kin is obviously more family. Uh, Kith is the people that are associated with you a little bit more broadly. Um, so Kin can fall into Kith, uh, Kith can fall into Kin, etc. Uh, they keep calling them Kith in this, but they do put them together often in this book. Um, and basically, what you do is you go ahead and you select, uh, or you create several different, uh, kith for you they don't call them npcs because again it's they're not npcs <laughs> um but what you do is you create on basically note cards uh associated individuals with you uh you don't need to pick playbooks for them you don't need to do anything like that you just need to create things uh let me find exactly where it is in here um but you just need to find uh basically who they are and what they're like. Uh, here it is. For each kith you have, write down the following information. The name and some pronouns, the animal form or species of bug, godly manifestation, whatever it is, depending on like what type of individual this is. Uh, relationship to another character that can be yourself or somebody else. Um, it should be somebody else often as well so that, you know, there's a little bit more circulation going around the table here. A single detail, occupation, quirky trait, interest, etc. At least two traits from the list. Uh, and what those let that kith do. And then you can always add more to it, but those first five bullet points are going to be sort of your building blocks. That is it. That That is everything that you need there. Um, it is not uh, anything more than that. And you just have those basically note cards around you so that if somebody's character breaks off um, because their journey has finished with you, they can reach over and pick up uh, one of the kith cards and they have someone to play still. Uh, a playbook is not the thing that defines you in this game. It is the traits uh, and the way that you interact that defines you more heavily than anything else. So these are a really good way to just kind of like keep things moving um, and allow people that uh, that feeling of freedom to 
have their character exit story at a logical place, even if there's another hour left in the game, or uh, there's supposed to be 12 more sessions or something like that, uh, because it the game is built to allow that sort of free flow circulation as things go on. Plus, it gives, if you are playing with a guide, the guide um, a really great thing to build off of for the people that you're going to be interacting with. Um, but that is everything I have for you guys on how to build characters, because honestly, it is that simple. There, there is nothing hardcore about this. This isn't Pathfinder. This isn't D&D. Honestly, it's not even Kids on Bikes. It, you have four pages, maybe if you put them all on the same page, two actual pages of information that you have to get through in order to create a character. And that's that's it. It's it's really, really light, really, really easy. Um, and quite frankly, the a lot of fun to just sort of get to sit down and do because you're not creating like hardened words. You're creating just like average little guys, average little guys who just want to do their own thing. So that is everything I have to talk to you guys about today. Thank you so very much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my subscribers. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in supporting the show, uh, go ahead and subscribe either on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform, whatever works best for you. Um, and uh, yeah, that's everything I have uh, to talk about today. So with all that said, everybody, don't forget, drink tea, play TTRPGs, and keep on rolling. <laughs>